What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sport topic. And today we're going to talk some basketball. The NBA draft is approaching. So I'm breaking down players that's going to be in this NBA draft. And this player right here is what most of y'all have been waiting on. I've been getting comments, snaps, text messages, tweets, Instagram uh, DMs, all type Facebook uh, comments, Facebook DMs, and instant messages about this one player right here. So this is what I know a lot of people have been anticipating on and want me to break down. So I'm going to break them down for y'all. Trey Young, point guard. Oklahoma, number 11. We is the, this is the player we're going to break down. Now, I'm going to start off by saying, as a Magic fan, I am, that is who I want the Magic to draft. Coming into the draft process, this is the player that I wanted us to draft. And I was like, but you know, I'm pretty sure my mind will sway once I start breaking down other players, which I have. I start breaking down other players and start liking other players and wouldn't be opposed to us getting these other players as well. But did it change my mind with Trey Young? Yes, but in a good way. The more film I watched on them, and the more film I watched on Trey Young, it made me want Trey Young even more. Now I know, like the whole, and I'm, I'm gonna explain why. Uh, the whole Steph Curry comparisons. One, he shouldn't be compared to Steph Curry, guy outside him playing point guard and him throwing up them crazy shots. Him and Steph Curry, him and Steph Curry are not the same player. They're not. They, they, they're really not. Their game is really not similar at all. He actually has a game similar to Nash. More, he has more Kevin Nash than um, Steph Curry. But they get compared because of the crazy shots. And also, people, and then the comparison is unfair anyway. Because one, Steph Curry is now a two-time uh, two MVP, three-time champion. And uh, um, Trey Young hasn't even played an NBA Mini yet. Also, Curry was a uh, was a play in college at Dawson three years. Trey Young's only... Well, only freshman year at Oklahoma. And another thing, we just start thinking that Trey, uh, um, Curry got drafted in 2009, 8 or 9, 1 or 2. But either way, go. We didn't, Curry didn't become an all star until 2014, then win the MVP into 2015. So we didn't start thinking about Curry being Steph Curry to the earliest, it's 2013. So, Curry, and then plus he had two extra years of college. On top of that, now I also know Curry got with um, had a lot of injuries early on in his career, like he's having lately. But I know he had a lot of injuries early on with his ankles and knees and whatnot. But that was a knock on him that maybe you know he wouldn't be able to be healthy enough. But we are comparing two people games. Like one, Curry is a scorer; he's a straight scorer. So Steph Curry career averages six point eight assists a game. That's his career average. Trey Young, on the other hand, is the only player. In college basketball history, to lead the league in uh, lead college basketball in both scoring and in assists. Let's break down some of his numbers. He averaged twenty-seven point four a game, led college basketball, and eight point seven assists, led college basketball. First player to ever do that. Um, field goal percentage: He was uh, uh, forty-three point two from the field, thirty-six point uh, um, uh, thirty-six uh, percent from three. Uh, 80, uh, 86.1 from the free throw line, which that's something he definitely needs to work on more. 6'2", 180. He, he bulked up. I mean, if you if you look at him, if you look at him from now, from when he was uh, um, at college, actually, I think he's actually 180, uh, 187 now um, because that's during the column, that's during the, uh, the the combine. And he's actually picked up some more weight since then, good weight. He Because he just had an interview in Orlando that was it's strictly muscle that he's picked up. He's picked up 12 pounds in muscle that he was from his last game. So from the last time he played until now, he's picked up 12 pounds of strictly muscle, which will help him. Um, well, I know his deficiency in defense. One is going to help him his deficiency in defense. It's going to help him be a, a stronger, better player. It's going to help him go to the rim more, able to finish, able to uh, attack, and also take on the punishment. So if he does get fouled, it'll be more of an and one situation because he's stronger now. He's bulkier. He like I'm not, I'm not saying he's out there just swole, but you can definitely tell the difference if you look at him, a picture from him now and a picture from in one of his games. In any game, pick a game. Pick the last game he played at, at March Madness against uh, Rhode Island. I think was who they lost to in the tournament. You can definitely see a, a difference. It's like you don't even have to point out. You just look like damn. You can see the defenses. You you, you can see. The uh, you can just look at him and tell there's a difference that he's bulk, he's more bulkier, he has more mass now than he did then. It's a good thing. Now, like I said, a lot of people compare him to Curry because of the shots and maybe to step back and hit those crazy ass threes and all that type of stuff like that. But his biggest attribute, his biggest attribute, 
is his ability to pass. He has like, like I think someone even said he is like he has a third eye. Like he sees plays happen before they happen. Now I know a lot of his assists came from him throwing hail marys from I uh, you know somebody get a rebound him throwing hail marys all the way across the court. Hey, he had the awareness and the fortitude to see those passes. I was watching games that it was situations where he could took the game winning shot, but he made the game winning assist. Kind of like LeBron. I'm not saying it's LeBron. I'm just saying he he could have built been selfish and went for a layup and go through traffic and try to be the hero. But as he run in, he sees somebody on wide open. He did this that wide open shot. Get, they get the win or got the tie. It's a tie. He didn't have to be the hero. He was the hero in the other attributes. That's what I think is the strongest, his strongest key. Because when we break down players, come into drafts, when we talk about all great players, players are always judged by these things. You have your athletes, your straight athletic freaks who are just a better athlete than everybody. Which is what a lot of people always try to go after, get the best athlete, get the best athlete. But when that athlete starts getting hurt, or starts getting longer too, starts getting older, they have to leave. Because they have nothing else to fall back on. Because once the athleticism is gone, you can't get that back. You got people who are pure shooters, who just be able to knock down shots. They can be stars, but even as they get older, they can go to the bench. And come off the bench and still score like Ray Allen, like Mike Miller. Even though he got hurt or, or being old, whatever the case may be, they can still come off the bench in Miami and help LeBron, Bosch, and Wade win a championship off the bench because they knock down shooters. Got people who are defensive players, who are just defensively, mentally sound, who know how the, the X's and O's. So even when the game has passed them by, they still mentally have the X's and O's, and they're still aggressive. They can still come off the bench and give you good, give, give you good minutes def uh, defensively. They have people who have the capability to make people better by passing. They have that, that gift of passing that they can see plays happen before they happen, and they can always create for somebody. Those type of players, even when they're older, even when they get hurt and they come back from injuries and the game is passing by, not only do they still be on the team and be coming off the bench, majority of those players can still be starters, especially a point guard. Look at kids started his whole career. Same thing with Steve Nash. Like, like these players who the strongest thing, and I know Kid was good on defense, the strongest thing they can do is assist, make plays around them better. That's always, uh, always a key. So if you able, if you have that talent, that rare talent to make somebody better at all times, that's a key for you to, to not only keep your career going longer, to extend your career, but to extend your career as a starter. Not just, I mean, because you can, you can have that shot, and you can extend your career, you just be a six-man coming off the bench. But you have that shot, and you have the capability of passing, which I think is something that we hugely underrate Trey Young, and the reason why I think we underrate him because of his teammates. Because I know a lot of his shooting percentage went down, like his record went down. One, he was playing in one of the toughest conferences in basketball, if not college basketball's uh, toughest conference last year in the Big 12. I mean, you had Texas Tech, you had Kansas, you had Kansas State, you had Oklahoma State, you had Baylor, you had Texas, you had Virginia Tech, you had um, TCU. Every team in that conference outside of Iowa State who had the worst, uh, the, uh, had, it was just a bad team, Baylor and Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Those are the only three teams that did not make, out of 10 teams, those are the only three teams that did not make the tournament. Oklahoma made the tournament. Texas made the tournament. Texas Tech was one of the best teams in college basketball last year. Um, Kansas made the tournament. Kansas State made the tournament. TCU made the tournament. Like all these other schools made the tournament. West Virginia made the tournament. Like, like the Big 12 last year was loaded. I'm a Duke fan. I, I, I'm, when it comes to college basketball, I'm a Duke fan. Now a lot of people watch my channel and know about my football videos when it comes to college football. Texas Tech is my school. Texas Tech, Texas Tech is my school, period. So, even though Duke is my favorite college basketball team, outside Texas Tech playing Duke, when I see Texas Tech play somebody, if they're not playing Duke, I'm going to ride for Texas Tech, hope Texas Tech, help Tech come away with that win. And the games I watched, Texas Tech was a damn good team last year. Both times that Texas Tech played uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma's not in the game without Trey Young. Like, like, without Trey Young, like, anytime Texas Tech made it, uh, anytime Texas Tech took the lead and did something, um, Trey Young made the answer. Trey Young had to answer to tie it or either bounce. Like, 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 Trey Young had to answer for every kill shot that Tech made, even though they lost. But still, 
like he had that four two. Like he was a, he was a leader on that team, the best player on that team. And I said I know the, the his his um his field goal percentages, his three point shots all went down. His numbers went down from the beginning of the year. He was trying to do too much. I think it got so apparent that he was the only player on that team to to help that team, and they I think that he just took too much of a load. He tried too many shots that he shouldn't have tried. He tried those, all, uh, you know, he can every now and again knock those half court shots, knock those thir- um, come back, pull up from 30, 34, 35, and hit, and hit open threes. But sometimes he took shots that he shouldn't have took. And I think more so us comparing him to Curry, um, the whole hype that was going behind him. Oklahoma was a trash team. I think Oklahoma had 11 wins the year before. Then they come on with, with Trey Young. He, he leads some 18 wins into the tournament. That... All that hype, all all that, because I think they started off twelve and three or something like that. They started off hot, like all that hype. I'm thinking about it, like before they lost their fourth game, they already had two more wins than the year before. I think they were, oh yeah, two yeah. I think they were thirteen and thirteen and three at one point. So they already had two more wins than they had the whole season before. By the time they won, I mean by the time they lost their third game. That's crazy. That's the type of hype he was under. And everybody, and I'm pretty sure he was feeding into him. I'm pretty sure he was the big man on campus. So he was taking elevated shots. He was just trying to just, he was doing too much. He was going to his head, he was pumping him to his head, and he was trying to hit those shots. I don't have a pro, I don't think that's going to be an issue in the NBA because I don't think that he's going to try that in the NBA. I'm pretty sure if the game he getting hot and he start pulling up and just start hitting back crazy threes. But once he starts missing them, his coach and his teammates are not going to continue to let him keep hitting up those crazy shots. So I know that's a lot, a lot of reasons why some people think he's a, he's going to be a bust. But I don't, I don't have that issue with him because I don't think that he's going to be allowed to take those type of crazy shots in the NBA, especially when they're not falling. Once he gets one game, or not even a game, once he gets a, a quarter of taking two shots like that that don't fall, coach is like, uh-uh, don't you ever try that shit again. Like, I, I, that's what it's going to be like, especially coming into his career now as a rookie. I don't think he'll do it now as a rookie anyway because he's a rookie. Maybe if he, when he's an all-star type player, yeah, he'll start knocking down those shots. Like I said, I don't remember Steph Curry his first couple of years knocking those crazy shots. I think it, it took Curry, it, it took Steph a while to get into Steph mode. Like I say, he didn't become an all-star until 2014. So I know we weren't talking about Curry until 13 at the earliest. About being that type of elite shooter. Come on. So I don't see that being an issue with Trey Young. And I do think that him his ability to pass and to get people wide open and have people and have the the, the the talent level dip that he had in Oklahoma against that competition in the Big Twelve, how he's able to elevate that. I think he can do that way more for your franchise. Especially if you have pieces around like I'm a Magic fan. We got pieces like Gordon. We got pieces like Isaac. We got shooters like Fournier. Mario is is, is somewhat of a nice shooter. Especially uh, Fournier is definitely a, 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 a knockdown shooter. Like he's going to be able to open up the game for them. Open up the lanes for him. I mean, I, I like EP. EP was an athletic guy, defensive guy. I know Trey Young is, is, is he's not, he's not, he's defensively challenged. He's also alluded that he says that he wants to prove that he can play defense. I do think it's more of a mentality thing and also a size thing. He's been bulked up. I think him him putting on that mask showing you that he is trying. That he that he knows he needs and then also he no one at, when he was in the magic facility, he wasn't asked about his defense. He brought his he brought up the lack of defense of his own. So you know it's on his mind. He's training. So I do believe that he's gonna come out there and at least attempt to play defense. Now of course you're gonna have to probably do stuff schematically to help shelter his defense, to hide some of his de- de- defensive deficiencies. But if he's trying, I do think that he's going to be a much better defensive player than we've seen the year before in Oklahoma. So I'm not too much worried about that. I think the most thing that you people should be worried about is the shot selection. I don't think that's going to be the case because I think they, the coaches and his other teammates will wheel him back if he's taking crazy-ass shots. The best attribute is him able to score, him able to assist. Him, his, the threat of him scoring, because one threat that Oak, um, that um, EP didn't have, no one was scared of uh, uh, of Peyton jumping back and trying to hit a shooter, uh, jumping back and trying to shoot. It was all him driving to the lane or, or making the pass. See, now with Trey Young, if Trey is safe, if Trey Young goes to the Magic, if if Gordon is going, going down the lane, 
they got they got keep their eye on Gordon because they, they but they don't want to leave Trey wide open and let Trey hit knock the open shot, especially if it's from three, because he will not back. He'll he'll step back and knock open a wide open three. He showed you the capability. He is a three point shooter. And like I said, his percentages went down because I think he was taking too many shots. They were doing a lot of traps. They start they, other teams and coaches start to realize that without Trey Young, Oklahoma can't beat us. So if we crowd Trey Young and we stop Trey Young, he can't get the ball out. And even if he tries to get out, if, if, if we're trapping him, even if he is trying to get the ball out, it's going to turn into a turnover. That's, so that's where the turnovers came through. Like, it, like, it's, it's, if you watch the film, a lot of the fi- a lot a lot of the mistakes he made towards the end of the season, you can definitely see why they came like that. And a lot of things are very much coachable and very fixable, especially in the NBA. And I think that he would be actually I think he'll be a better player in the NBA because of the talent around him that he would have in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Like I do think uh, being on the NBA team and being with an NBA coach will actually help him more than Oklahoma when it's like, hey, Trey, do what you do and get us a win. That's, like, that's how it really was at Oklahoma. It's like, here's the ball. Do whatever it is you got to do to get a win. It's not a system. It's not him being coached. It's not the players around him being coached. It's Trey, do what you got to do. That's not going to happen in the NBA. Now, I do think the perfect system for him would be like maybe like a, a – um, um, Dan Tony system, how Dan Tony ran in Phoenix. I'm not sure outside. Of kind of Dan Tony's the coach of the Rockets, and he doesn't he doesn't really run the exact same seven seconds or less offense that he ran when he was in Phoenix. He runs similar to it. He like it, he's evolved it some, especially having uh, James Harden and Chris Paul. So I don't know a coach that actually coaches that same exact system or another um, um, similar system that that seven seconds or less. That um that Dan Tony ran with with Steve Nash and uh and Phoenix when when Nash won those back to back MVPs that would be a perfect system for Trey Young that would be a handmade system for Trey Young that type of tempo speed that like, that would be a perfect system for him and we, we're talking about schematically and system fit that that would be the perfect system that type of style but when it comes to um him as a player I do think I I, I said I do th- think that part of his dip. In the season was due to them knowing that without Trey Young, they couldn't. Be, Oklahoma couldn't beat them. He's not going to have that same situation in the NBA unless he goes to a team like Cleveland. I see Cleveland and Markham A because we all know, especially after LeBron got swept, LeBron's not staying in Cleveland. I don't care. So if Cleveland drafts him, yeah, he probably could be a bust because it will be all on him to score, and he would have to take those crazy ass shots because. That I mean, look at Le- what LeBron had to do. LeBron puts up fifty points, even though I, I don't care. It's gonna say LeBron put up 50, fifty points, and they lost the game because J.R. Smith. Like you, like like that, that Cleveland team. If he went to Cleveland, it would be a it'd be a debacle for him. It would be the worst situation for him that I can see. Um, the Chicago, you got Levine. Um, I forgot the guy they, they the guy they drafted last year. Yeah, he's a nice he's a nice player. Like so, he won't be exactly by himself. So he can be able to do some things passing the ball. So his his key of assistant can help him there, and he'll still be able to score. Um, as a Magic fan, I do want him to come to Orlando. I do think that him, I could just could see him watch him and Aaron Gordon do layups and uh, and lobs all day. I did a video breaking down Michael Porter Jr. Michael Porter Jr. and Trey Young. On the same AAU squad, so I'm watching film from Michael Porter Jr. Trey Young is jumping out to me on my screen. I'm seeing these passes that Trey Young is giving Michael Porter Jr. at times, and I'm like, "Yes, I know I'm supposed to be watching Michael Porter Jr. and Michael Porter Jr. is a talent. I can definitely see Aaron Gordon in that same exact situation. I can definitely see Aaron Gordon being the person getting those passes from Trey Young. I can see Isaac." With the length he has, and and that's how you can kind of help his defense, have them play de- team defense with a player like Isaac, with a player like Gordon to help play defense. Now I do think you probably need to add another guy, a, a defensive guy. That's something that you probably want to do um, via for agency. Add another guy who's a who's a defensive beast to help with that to help take some of the pressure off of Trey Young because you don't want to put pressure on Trey Young anyway. He's a rookie. Help. Take some of the pressure off of Trey Young. And it's not like we want Trey Young to be an MVP today. But I do think that he's on the trajectory. I do think that he has the talent trajectory to lean towards being an all-star. 
or at the very least. I mean, because one, like I said, um, this past season, Aaron Gordon showed you all-star capability. He showed you that he has some type of all-star capability. Add Trey Young to that. I do think you get an all-star out of um, Aaron Gordon, and I do think that Trey Young will eventually be an all-star. Like I said about um, Michael Porter Jr., Michael Porter Jr.'s talent definitely has him as a top five, uh, five years from now, top five player elite scorer. Trey Young, five years from now, can be, well, not can, uh, uh, Trey, Trey Young will be an elite passer. He would be among the assist leaders. And as far as elite scoring, I don't know if he'll be an elite scorer, but he will be a damn good scorer. And actually, no, he'll be an elite three point shooter. He'll be one of the, he'll be amongst one of the top three point shooters in the NBA. He'll be a top ten scorer, a top five three point shooter in the NBA. I, I do think that. I, I I think that he has that type of skill set. And I do think being in the NBA will take, surprisingly, it will take some of the pressure off because he won't have the exact pressure in Oklahoma unless he goes to a team that's completely dead and he's the only, hey, Trey Young, do what you got to do to win the game. Because then that's when you start taking ill shots. That's when you start making bad shots, making bad decisions, turn the ball over, and that's when you start looking like a bus, a or slash, a six, get quoted and thrown as a six-point player, like, you know, a, a, a six-man off the bench player. But if you're in the right situation, which I think most teams would be for him, a right situation, if they have at least somebody else on the team, just one more person, who could at least take some attention off. And I know, like, the manager can't take no attention off. I do think that Aaron Gordon has all-star capability. I mean, he, he could have been all-star. If he had been healthy all season, I do think he could have been all-star. But if you put him in that type of situation, one, you elevate. I think him, the addition of him would definitely elevate Aaron Gordon to be all-star status. I do think if you had Trey Young... Aaron Gordon would definitely be all star like in the East next year. And I do think that Trey Young would be on that trajectory to be a future all star a list uh, assist leader and a top scorer. I do yeah, so yeah, I do think Trey would be a top scorer. Do I think he'll be the team's leading scorer? Probably not. I think like uh I could see him averaging probably like seventeen and nine his rookie year and then going forward be a uh be mid to low twenties, uh ten eleven assist guy. For his career, I, I do concede that. So, like, share, subscribe if you haven't commented below. If you haven't clicked that, get, ah, ooh, I messed that up horrible. I'm so sorry. Like this video, like, share, subscribe if you haven't commented below. If you haven't clicked that bell, get my videos. If you disagree with me, if you don't think like, if you don't like Trey Young, if you think Trey Young is trash, comment, let me know. If you think that Trey Young is going to be the next truth, comment, let me know. I holla.